Okay, the first place we're gonna start is we're gonna be getting the fur down off of the legs. So a lot of people like to start up here. Um, it's a lot harder to do that way. Um, also, the way that I have my hangers, I don't put them down behind the ankle. I put them up around the actual foot so that I can later manipulate the ankle and cut it off for putting in the, the ice bucket. So what I'll do is I'll just pinch the side here, stick it in straight up, okay? Then I'm up right now. And then my goal is to just get it off around the leg here. And then I just cut it up back around the ankle, still while holding this. Be careful, this is a very tender spot. You pull too hard, too quickly, and you can rip it. So we're just gonna pull that back towards the anus here. Same thing on this side. Now I have a knife in my right hand. I have a pinch of skin, and I'm just straight up. Make sure your knife is sharp, and I'm just gonna come right up. I'm gonna pull this around. Now I have just the thin piece here that I could actually shove my finger through if I wanted to. I'm just gonna put in my knife and I'm gonna come up to the ankle, pull that off, same thing, pull it towards. Then I'm gonna take these two fingers on each hand. Always turn the, I always turn the knife around backwards, okay? It takes me too long to stick the knife, you know, on a table, in my scabbard, whatever. So often I, mentally always try to turn it around backwards so that the blade is never going to hit my other hand. So now I'm going to take these two fingers and I'm going to work these fingers pulling the skin, the fur away from the skin. Now I just have it straight up to the tail. I'm going to work the knife right up to the tail and I'm just going to pull it right through. Now I'm sitting here. I got everything away from the legs. Now for chefs, I like to leave the fat on. Some people don't. If you're doing this for your own freezer, okay? So I'm just gonna work the fat away from the skin. Okay? Sorry, my tool belt's making. So now that I have it separated, I've got the fat left on. Now, sometimes if there's a lot of fat and I wanna present it nice to the chef. I'll just leave that on there. But where I was at was head. Normally I'll take the head off first, but I'll just hold on to the ears and I tend to turn the head up because I've already bled it out. Turn the head up, hands out of the way, straight down. And then I'm going to uh, dispose of the head. Okay, so now, I'm gonna just work this down side to side, okay? Normally I'm working a lot faster, but you'll see this little thin sinewy, whatever it's called. And I'll just work that so that it doesn't rip the fat off. Because again, presentation, uh, chefs like to cook with the fat. And now I'm left right here with fur on the front feet. I'm just going to, with the same knife, I'm gonna pull it up like that, right at the joint. And it just goes right through the joint. Okay, same on the other one. Okay, now I'm gonna dispose of the fur. Okay, now, so you can see there's a bit of fur on here. If there was, if it was, it's summertime, so sometimes they're molting, etc. If it's real bad, sometimes I'll give it a little bit of a pre-rinse, but when it's dry, it's a little easier to work with. So I'll come in, and I mentioned in another post why I like these knives. It's short, you have a lot more control on where your knife is when you're working with such a small animal and you got your other hand around uh, in such close proximity. So with here, I'll come in, right next to the thigh, and I'm just gonna work it off that edge. Same thing on the other side. I'm just gonna work it off that edge. I'm gonna stick it in right to the tailbone. You can see right here, I'm going to, I'm not cutting 
in or poking into the actual uh, anus there, but just working it off that tailbone, okay? So now there's one little section that's left after you've done that. And that's this little front piece. I'm just gonna cut that off. You might have to give it a, one more little whack on each side, but now you're left with that completely independent, okay? Now I'm gonna make a tiny little incision here. I don't like to make it too big. Again, for me, it's all about presentation. If I cut across too wide, then you have this huge diamond when you're done. I'm gonna stick my two fingers in, okay? My fingers are gonna guide my knife, okay? But also keep me from poking into any of the intestines. Now, when I'm pulling down, I'm not poking in like this. I'm just letting the edge of the blade come and follow my hand. Letting my hand work it down, okay? Now, that I'm right here, sometimes I'll come in and just bring that up a little bit more. From here, I'm just gonna take this finger right here, shove that in. I'm gonna take these three fingers and I'm gonna work my hand around everything. I can feel my other finger right there handing it off to me. I'm gonna pull it down, being sure not to pinch the bladder and I'm just going to pull this down, okay? Now, we have just this joint right here, holding everything together. I'm gonna to take these two fingers right here, reach down, and just gently pull down, okay? I like, chefs really like the livers, so I'm gonna pop those out. Now, I have everything loose. If I let go, it's just hanging on the throat right here, okay? So with, with my fingers here, I'm just gonna pull this up. Okay, everything's out. I'm gonna wrap it around, pull off the liver. I'm gonna dispose of this. Now, here's a trick with this here, okay? If you pull from this side, you're gonna shove it back up the vein. So you always wanna pinch it from the point here, like this, and pull back away not to shove any of the toxins back into the liver. So I'm gonna dispose of that. I'm gonna put the liver in my ice bucket. Okay, now we have everything. You can see how clean this is. Perfectly clean cavity. And I'm just gonna break this here. Same thing. We're working these fingers. Just gonna reach in. If you need to, you can stick another finger up in the neck and it's just gonna allow you to pull that right out. With the same, with this in my hand, if you like to keep the hearts, which we do, I'll pop the heart out of the little sack that it's in. That allows me to just break this off. Okay, I'll dispose of the lungs. That's where we're making dog food. And with the heart, I'll throw it into my ice water. Sometimes I'll rinse it off, but for now I'm just gonna toss it in there, okay? At this point, I'm just gonna give my hand a little wash. Now, okay, so now I'm going to clean it off, okay? So I always have a hose. Now, a little tip with the nozzles. These are the really little, cheap uh, $2 nozzles. They actually work better than any of the fancier ones. They give you a really clean, if you need a wide spray to softly spray it, or you need a, a hard spray, it's a, it actually is, is my favorite nozzle for, for cleaning. So uh, again, for presentation wise, I see a lot of people breaking this cavity, that's fine. We don't do it just for presentation for chefs. Um, we try to keep a really clean, clean lines. Uh, fur wise, I'm just gonna work from top down, rinsing it off. I'm always spraying straight down like this because I don't, one of the things that I don't want to do is our feet stay pretty clean as a, as a, um, you know, just our herd in general. But if there's going to be any bacteria, it's going to be on here. I try not to get these wet because I don't want that dripping down my uh, carcass here. So again, as I spray, I'm going to be spraying down. Okay. 
and I'm going to work all that fur that would be on there off of the carcass. Again, this is going to be at a restaurant. So I'm going to work this really well here for a couple seconds. Okay, I'm gonna clean in here. Now I don't spray too hard while I'm while I'm in here with a. I'm usually pretty pretty wide with my spray, pretty gentle. I'll spray it harder down into the to the neck cavity, get all that stuff washed out. I'm trying not to manipulate the the uh, kidneys here. Again, presentation um, it makes a big difference, especially depending on what your application is. A lot of these things I'm mentioning are gonna be irrelevant if it's just going in your freezer. Um, but if you're a little OCD like me, then you can uh, just keep everything nice and clean, okay? So again, trying not to get any of my uh, feet up here wet, okay? And this is where you'll notice that having uh, these up on the higher on the feet come in handy, okay? Is I'm gonna use the side of my middle finger, okay? If this was down lower like this, I couldn't break that ankle off because this is down here, it's in the way. So we like to keep it up high. So again, inside my middle finger, what we're gonna be doing is these joints pop really easy. They don't pop easy if you try to take the front of the foot and bend it this way or bend it this way. Uh, they pop right out of the joint. If you use your middle finger here, wrap it around, and then these knuckles right here are going to pop it sideways right there, okay? So let me show you again. Now we're going to be manipulating the ankle straight this way, okay? 90 degrees. So I'm gonna wrap my middle finger around it and I'm just going to straight, straight down, okay? Right there. Now, I'll just take my knife and work. So that's, this is why I like these curved knives, okay? Is because again, short, stiff blade, but when I'm working little areas, it's curved and it just happens to work really well for dealing with rabbits. If I need to get in here and go this way, come in, it just works really well. We do more of a French style. Some people break the legs off or I don't, here's a, here's a, th here's the thing. I don't use any clippers to break, to clip the back feet off or the front feet. The reason is when you go and you vacuum seal these, these are really smooth joints. If I go and cut these with uh, trimmers, they're gonna be sharp. Same with the front. I've walked my knife right through the joint. These are nice, smooth, round edges. So I'm not gonna do any puncturing of my vacuum seal bag. So there we go. Now I'm gonna do one more and I'm gonna walk through it without talking and I'm just going to show you how I'll do it uh, walking through quickly. I'm going to take the head off first just before I even get started. Now usually there's somebody working with me. They're running the camera right now but they would have this already hooked up. So again Holding the side, working my way up, okay? If I need to, sometimes I'll make a little cut there just to get it worked off the side, up and over, working that side down. I'm being direct, quick, but very intentional at the same time so that I don't uh, manipulate the meat in a way that I don't want for presentation when a, when a chef is opening his package, okay? I'm gonna pop that up. And I do brush this down just to work the fur down, gets it in the direction I wanna go. I'm gonna take that fat off, walk that down, okay? Now, 
I'm just gonna walk this down, break that little seal there, walk this off. Now the fur comes down right to the joint. I'm gonna put it on the edge of the fur and the joint, walk that right through. Walk that right through, dispose of that, coming back up, coming up on the side, like we discussed, working it off the tailbone, nipping that front piece, okay? Small incision, sometimes it gets stuck on the fat here. Now that I'm trying to present it. My See this, right now my hands are, are wet and the carcass is a little wet. This is why a lot of times um, I try to keep it dry and I try not to do a lot of sawing. Sawing just, you know, makes the meat not look very presentable. But I'm getting a little... Okay. Work it up. Right there. Again, turn my knife around. Walk this down. Make sure I'm not pushing the bladder out. Okay. I'm just going to pull that down. These will be attached to the kidney, so I'm trying not to break the kidney off. I'm going to lock this down, pull this out, pull that up, pull the kidney or liver off and around, dispose of that. Again, taking it from that side, pulling that off, tearing that open, reaching in. With those two fingers like I showed before, popping that heart out of the sack, pulling it off the lungs. Boom, done. Okay, now you can keep a really steady pace. You're not rushing, but you're also very consistent, and you can do a lot of rabbits in a short amount of time, okay, and have them present really, really well. Okay, so again, rinsing off. Nozzle pointed down, avoiding getting my feet wet. Boom, good. Okay, so again, these fingers right here, I'm just gonna pop that off. Boom, much, much nicer. Okay, you get a much cleaner joint than clipping them with clippers. Okay, here we have it. Thanks so much. Go ahead and ask questions in the comments and I'll try and add anything else that uh, people ask, how I vacuum seal. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be other questions that come up. I will do a video on the actual kill. I just, uh, I'm way behind right now, so I gotta get going. Thanks guys.